In this video, we are going to look at the concept of energy. Energy is defined as the capacity to do work. Energy is what makes matter move or change. And this capacity to do work has to do with the particles that are present in the molecule. When it comes to the type of energy, energy can be classified in two large families, starting with kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is going to be the energy in a particle that comes as a result of its motion. Kinetic energy actually has disruptive forces because these forces are going to result from particle motion. So whenever we have to associate the forces that are present in kinetic energy, we're going to define it as disruptive forces. When it comes to kinetic energy, we have different types of kinetic energy that include mechanical energy, electrical energy, thermal energy, radiation energy, and sound energy. Even though we have different types of kinetic energy, the one that we mostly see in this course is going to be thermal energy, or in other words, heat. The other classification that we can have for energy is going to be potential energy. When it comes to potential energy, this is the energy that is stored in particles due to their motion, composition, or arrangement. The force that is present specifically in potential energy has to do with cohesive forces. And these um, specific forces are just going to be attractive forces between particles. Potential energy uh, also has subcategories. We have chemical energy, nuclear energy, gravitational energy, and elastic energy. Already in this semester, we have discussed nuclear energy when we look at radiation and radioisotopes. But now, in this chapter, we are going to look more closely, closely at chemical energy because that's the energy that is stored in bonds of atoms and molecules. That chemical energy is really tied in to the concept of nutrition. What we see in this slide is that when we're trying to have a balanced lifestyle, we need to look at the energy in our food and balance it to the energy that is going to be specifically needed for our body functions. And also we can include physical activity. So the chemical energy that I was referring to a few moments ago is that through our nutrition, specifically the three important biomolecules, carbs, proteins, and fats, are going to contain compounds that have chemical energy and that is going to provide it to our body. Now, Physical activity can also be utilized in order to balance the intake of energy through food. As you can see here, one hour of swimming actually uses half a million energy calories. But when it comes to the unit that we utilize, even though these energy calories look like a lot, in reality, because the conversion of this energy calories to nutritional calories, which are defined by a capital letter C, if we do the conversion, 502,000, so 502,000, 1,000 calories, let me write the unit, equals one nutritional calorie. Then we see that by swimming, you actually burn about 502 nutritional calories. When it comes to nutrition, calorimeters are the instruments that are utilized in order for us to see the nutritional calories in food. 
And a calorimeter measures specifically heat transfer that is generated by a food sample. I'm going to explain how a calorimeter works by focusing on the image that we have on the right side of the slide, which is a figure for specifically a calorimeter. Inside of calorimeter, we're going to have a steel combustion uh, chamber, which is just a chamber where a chemical reaction that is called combustion is going to occur. In order for combustion to happen, we need oxygen. And when a food sample is placed in this steel combustion chamber, due to the presence of oxygen, that food sample will ignite. And we can see this little flame as the representation of the ignition of the food sample. Since that food sample is going to release heat energy, this heat energy is going to get out of this vessel and move into the water. The stirrer is going to make sure that that heat energy is in the water evenly. And because we're looking at the temperature difference, then a thermometer is going to look at how much heat was released from the food sample. In using equations, then they can actually, a scientists that are performing such experiments can calculate, based on the heat that is released, how many nutritional calories are in a food sample. So even though these experiments can be performed in a laboratory setting, in everyday life, all of this information has actually been included in nutritional facts labels. Nutritional facts labels at least let us um, have an insight into the amount of those important molecules that are going to contribute chemical energy when we consume them. When we look at a nutrition facts label, even though there's a lot of information that is present, we can observe in the image that we have on the right side of the slide that there's many information that is present there. The only thing that we need to take into account in order to know the chemical energy that comes from nutritional calories is looking at the amount of fat, the amount of carbohydrate, and the amount of protein. Already has been determined that the typical energy values for these three types of food, meaning the macros, is that every gram of carbohydrate contributes four nutritional calories. In other words, four kilocalories, because you can see that a nutritional calorie is the same thing as saying a kilocalorie. For every gram of fat, that's going to contribute nine kilocalories or nutritional calories. And lastly, protein is going to contribute four nutritional calories or kilocalories. So how do we use this information? Well, we can make a list in which we say, well, in this food label, I have four grams of fat. Carbohydrates, I'm going to abbreviate it as carbs. And we actually have 19 grams. When it comes to proteins, we have two grams. Now, knowing that this is what's present in my food label, specifically for the snack crackers, then I incorporate the typical energy values for the three foods to see if that leads to the value that I see here for the nutritional calories per serving in this food item. So I multiply the fat by nine nutritional calories in one gram. The carbs is going to be four nutritional calories in one gram. Proteins is four nutritional calories in one gram. So 
So if I do the first multiplication, I notice that the fat is going to contribute in terms of chemical energy, 36 nutritional calories. When it comes to the carbohydrates, there's 76 nutritional calories. And when I multiply the two by the four, the proteins here are going to contribute eight nutritional calories. So in these snack crackers, the macro that is contributing the most uh, nutritional or chemical energy is going to be specifically the carbohydrates. If I add these three numbers, then I see that this equals 120 nutritional calories, which this number matches what we have in the food label. Let's do one more example to solidify this concept. In the following problem, we are going to answer the following questions given the food label. When it comes to the following food label, the first question is, what is the serving size in grams? As we explore the food label, we can see that specifically each bar in this Nature Valley Protein Chewy Bar is going to have 40 grams in weight. Or I, or I should say amount of matter or mass. When it comes to the nutritional calories that are in one serving, then I need to uh, focus on the three macros, which is going to be fat, carbs, and protein. When I look at the food label, I record the amounts given, which for fat is going to be 12 grams, for carbs is 14 grams, lastly for protein is 10 grams. Then I incorporate the values for the nutritional calories that are given per gram for each of these. So for fat, we're going to multiply 12 by 9 calories per one gram. which this is 108 nutritional calories that are contributed by the fat. When it comes to the carbs, I'm going to multiply it by four. Which is 56 nutritional calories. And lastly, the protein, which is also four nutritional calories per one gram. So there's 40 nutritional calories. So when we're trying to define what is the major source for these nutritional calories in this food item, as you can observe here, fat is the major <coughs> source of these nutritional calories. When we add those values of 108 plus 56 plus 40, we can also observe that the total amount of nutritional calories in this food item is actually 204, but the label actually reports it as 190. Food labels sometimes have a discrepancy between some of the data reported and the total calories that show up on the label.